Where do Vietnamese living in Singapore think the best Vietnamese food stalls are? We went online to ask for recommendations specifically from the Vietnamese community in Singapore and picked the three most mentioned spots. Food finders! All right, and we are back with another episode. Today we are, I don't know where we are actually, somewhere in Jurong, but I do know today's episode is all about Vietnamese food. So we went online to our socials, went to Reddit, uh, and we were looking for Vietnamese food that Vietnamese in Singapore would recommend. We're gonna try some of these places today. Authentically authentic. But I'm not Vietnamese, how am I gonna do that? Later the, the online commenters again. But I do wanna shout out, there are some amazing comments on the last episode. So Gary, have you been to Vietnam? I have actually. Do you remember what dishes famous in Vietnam? Pho, obviously. I really like their leaf wrapped beef and then they grill it. And then obviously like banh mi and all the, the common stuff. Why do you think Singaporeans like Vietnamese food so much? Singaporeans? <laughs> um, I think the world likes Vietnamese yeah, the food. The world, yes. Because it's clean, it's refreshing, it's savory but not overpowering. All together like an awesome cuisine. Awesome. Like it's, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just, it's, it's awesome. Everything is awesome. Let's just do some random rapid-fire questions. What is the national dish of Vietnam? I'd have to say pho. Yes, <laughs> correct. So pho originated in the early 20th century of northern Vietnam. After the Vietnam War, its uh, refugees popularized it through the world. Said to be influenced by like Cantonese and French cultures. Vietnam is one of the few countries where people eat animal blood. What are three of the most popular types of animal blood that people eat? Pig's blood. I know duck blood is a thing in Taiwan. Do they eat yeah. duck blood? Yeah, yeah, duck blood is one of it. I don't know if people eat chicken blood. Do people eat cow blood? I'm gonna go with cow. They do eat a lot of beef. But the answer I have here is chicken blood. Oh, chicken dogs! Everything is awesome! There is a specialty dish called the Thiet Khan, made from freshly drawn blood mixed with fish sauce, meat and herbs. However, there were reports of human casualties after eating the blood pudding due to swine bacteria. That's the risk we take as Asians. So many people in Asia complained it was too easy, so they, uh, they, they made this. Vietnamese people use almost every single part of the pig to cook. What's the only part of the pig they don't use. I can only think of like the hoof or the teeth. Uh, the only part they don't use is the hair. Yeah, anyway. Why are the dining tables and chairs so low in Vietnam? Because Vietnamese people are short. <laughs> they want to be closer to the ground. Some people say the height of the chair corresponds to how expensive the restaurant is. The tiny plastic ones are usually found at mobile street food carts. Not quite full-size Western style, usually metal. Often found at higher-end coffee shops and restaurants. Full-sized Western chairs commonly found at the resorts or high-end restaurants. Is that a real thing? though like that doesn't seem like a historical fact hopefully some Vietnamese people actually watch this and uh, maybe you got some historical insights that was not easily found online let us know let's eat we're here at Bab Wang Ban Mi. Hole in the wall, Vietnamese stall in uh, Jurong. Known for huge banh mi with generous feelings and affordable prices. You in Singapore, you have been a Singapore? Why it's got a really nice aftertaste. It's caramelly. It coats the mouth real well. Voila! We have uh, three different banh mi's. We got the traditional, we got the beef and cheese, uh, and then we have the grilled pork. I think the pork ham, the pork floss. Oh my God, I think you got even more pate in here. And then I think it's the bologna. You got your cucumber, a little bit of cilantro, and then you got your um, pickled uh, radish and carrot. Exactly, exactly how it is done in Vietnam. And I might as well try this first. Oh my God. Okay, just, it's a lot of filling. That's really good. 
I don't actually know what they use in the patty, but it's like dense, it's thick. Because they put so much patty in here, that's kind of like the, the sauce in a sense. You got the different layers of the meat, all of it has its own little flavor, and then you got the crunch of the fresh cucumbers and the pickle, the refreshing vinegary stuff that cuts the flavor and then it just balances out. All that, plus the bread is just nicely crusty on the outside, folds very soft on the inside. It's like, it's really fluffy, right? And that's how you want a proper bun meat. Suddenly. Why did the bun me cry after watching a sad movie? Because they have fillings? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Lots of fillings if you come to this place. Kinchana ding 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 ding. Okay, you got your traditional stuff, and then you got like a kind of pork meatball. I thought it was gonna be a little bit more like a mooping thing, but it's actually more of like a pork meatball thing. You still got the patty. So that's quite nice. I just feel like the patty is like the thing that makes a bun me a bun me. You mean pate? Pate, pate. It's good. I still think the pate really makes it. If you like something like a bit more common flavors, right? Like nothing as extreme as this one. I think this does really well. Also, they have the chili and mayo. The mayo is a bit sweeter. I think they're using a sriracha, like not the, the cheap chili, you know, the SOS chili that you get here. The bread of the banh mi really makes banh mi. If you don't have the bread right, it doesn't matter how good the filling is. As far as I know, it's like Vietnam used to be a French colony. A lot of the French influence in Vietnamese cuisine now comes or derived from a lot of French techniques. Pate, pate. I'm actually curious. Genevieve, our other co-host, she's a baker. I wonder if she can make good banh mi. This is the beef and cheese. Originally, we thought it was gonna be like a Philly cheesesteak style, but no, it's basically a meatball again. We still got the pate, we still got the coriander, and we still got all the normal fixings. Both balls are all homemade, so they are fresh and authentic in that sense. I think this one has a little bit more of a Western-y vibe and flavor, and this one has a more Asian-y vibe and flavor. Still good banh mi's, but honestly, if I was to come here, I would only really go for this one. If you want that traditional full-fledged taste, I think they do a really great job of making the original, the authentic version really well. All these are equally the same price and great value, but with the traditional one, you're getting, let me just count for you, okay? No, thank you. No, thank you. No, thank you. I like how excited they are about this. Approved. If you're here in Jurong, give this place a visit. It's literally a hole in the wall, but it's in the hawker store. Great authentic stuff. Seven bucks, great value. This way, ba bun ban mi is the first one. Ki an wang is the second one. All right, and here we're here at the second place, now in uh, Juchet Road, Ki an Quan. I actually have a Vietnamese friend to pronounce it better, so. So how, how long has the restaurant been here already? Uh, uh, around going to 10, 10 years. 10 years? Yeah. 10 years? Uh -huh. Around 9 years something. You have a lot of dishes that are not very common in Singapore. Yeah, I have sweet and sour. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> As we're waiting for the food to come out here, I just want to like go briefly on their menu because quite an extensive menu with lots of snails. A Vietnamese friend has also told me like, if you can find this particular soup in a Vietnamese place, it's like probably most authentic snakehead fish sour soup. That one's yours too? Yeah. Wow, money good, huh? <laughs> I come to Singapore, work so hard, make so much money. <laughs> they're, they're very friendly. And I feel like I could be a bit more like playful, right? I do that with Singaporeans. They'd be like, hey, don't I, huh? I don't know. It's just like not the same. Now that we have the food options, the, the plating is really nice too. This massive pancake, which is actually really, really big. This is called ban xiao. This is like my wife's absolute favorite. This one is the met. Pun tao mam tum, pet mun tao mam tum. Mate, my accents, it's on point. Met ok tak biet, mixed snail special. And then this crab one, pun rei chao. So someone is gonna demonstrate how to. Uh, uh, so friend, you spray it. Just water? Just a bit of water? Yeah. Let me explain first. 
这个这个是猪肉，这个是豆腐啊，哦，这个是那个三层肉啊，呃，有 lettuce。OK OK， she's going. Oh, that's a tight roll. That is a tight roll. Just semi wet and then she rolls. Semi wet. It's actually still kind of dry feeling. Yeah. Oh, it's just like that. Service is good here. 好吃吗？好吃，好吃。This is the leaf I was talking about in Vietnam. The one that they wrap in beef. I don't know the name of it. What's the name? Balolo. Do you have balolo? Yeah, I have. But at our new shop. Oh, at the new shop. Oh, at the new shop. Oh, good saleswoman, Kim. Let's go with some of the. Crab here. So this is the actual crab. The crab has been kind of pureed and mixed with a bit of tofu and egg, and then steamed into this kind of brick. It's kind of like a grittier fish cake, but with like crab essence. Very unique texture, actually. So it's like soft, an omelet. Got that crab hint, crab taste, and it's got like that tofuiness to it. All right, I'm not into this, but I will take a big bite. Let's recreate what the nice lady did for us. Just like a couple of spritz, the green, the pork, and then a little bit of the noodle. And you got your pork on top. You got some mint leaves. Design it, and then the very last stop you have the lettuce. She was like really good at this because she rolled it like like a pro. It's like just super tight, and it just rolled like that. Boom. And then you dip it in their uh, fish sauce, and that will actually make the the rice paper a little bit more pliable. And that makes sense though. Like, if it's already wet, then it wouldn't absorb the fish sauce as much, no. Maybe. Let's eat some snails here. And this is a very common um, Vietnamese sauce where it's literally scallions, hot oil, and salt, uh, and it goes really well with a lot of shellfish. Very good, very good. Every time I see pork right now, I think of Tony. <laughs> this one, they like fry it with a bunch of the, you know, like sauces. So this one's a lot more flavorful. And this is like to dip like your plain steamed cockles or your plain steamed shellfish. The cockles are basically cooked like 60, 70 percent. So still a little bit bloody. The baby conch. Yeah, yeah, get the meat now. Wow. The sauce on that one is really nice. The conge is like meaty. The texture of the conge is like in between an abalone and a clam. It's a bit rubbery, it's a bit chewy. Good, very interesting. Let's try the river snail. Eww. That one packs a little bit of a punch. Have you had to try this one? What's this one called? Called a gong gong. Gong gong. Ooh, look at this one. Oh, this is also a type of conch. I can see this being very popular. So this is like kind of like finger food, and then you're just drinking. And I think this one's the only one I haven't tried yet, which is like a deep fried baby conch. Oh, that one is the most unique flavor. I think taste-wise. This one is the best one. This one, flavor-wise, is second. And then in terms of freshness stuff, like I like cockles, so cockles and this sauce was really nice. So this is ban xiao. You can see it's a very thin pancake. So it's a very light batter with turmeric, and then you can see there's a little bit of um, scallions put inside. And then basically it's, it's like a big pan. They cook it, and then they add all of your very commonly like you know pork belly, more vegetables, a little bit of. Uh, shrimp. What I learned is that you're actually supposed to eat, take parts of it, and take a piece of lettuce, add whatever side condiments you want, and then you basically just boom, something like that. And then there's the ban xiao specific sauce. Dip that in there, and uh, that's a good ban xiao. Of all the ban xiaos I've ever been to, this is one of the biggest and the most filled. I think this place is really good. Really authentic Vietnamese food. I like the plating. I like the variety. Usually, when you get this much variety in a menu, the food isn't that great. That's not really the case for this place. Plus, the auntie is really kind. The servers are very nice as well. How to? How to? Let's go to the last place. Star for le. Star.
na la. We're somewhere in Geelong. It's been a while since I've been here, so it does seem like the menu has changed a little bit. Last time I was here, they only served pho, and the prices were like really, really cheap. However, since then, I think they've kind of upgraded their food options. They have a little bit more add-ons. I can see also they have like a boco. We'll find out once we get in there. Here we are, we got the pho, your brisket, your meatball, your lean meat, and then probably a little bit of tripe. And then we actually got the boco. I'm telling you guys, if you've never had boco, give it a shot. Boco is the shits. And when I say the shits, I mean it's like good shit. And it will always come with a baguette. So boco is a beef stew that's just supposedly, it's like cooked until the meat should be just com completely fall off the bone. And then you basically take the baguette, you dip it, It's savory, it's sweet, it's beefy. This is actually pretty decent boco. This one still has some bite to it. My thoughts are... The boco flavor is there. It's a little bit more watered down. I think the meat itself, personally, not something I like because it's not as tender as the other ones I've had. And the other ones I've had also come with bigger chunks of meat, like more cubular, beefier chunks. And then when I eat those ones, it's literally like blah, blah. So I do feel like either this could do another two hours of boiling to really like just tenderize the meat more. All right, let's do the pho. Soup is decent. This is a little bit on the lighter side. Was the beef red or medium pink or pinkish when it came? Or was it, already, was already more it was already cooked. cooked? It was already more cooked. It's bad. Yeah. How do I, how do I go about this? I, I think it's a well-known place, but I think in comparison, if you go actually go to some of the other less chainy style stores, they have more authentic, full-flavored pho. The soup is not as flavorful as I would have hoped the medium rare slices and all that kind of stuff came a little bit more cooked than it should but everything is kind of i, I would say just average i don't really know what to say allow me allow me i paid for this so i'm gonna say what the f i want <laughs> I don't know, it feels like a, a, a place that kind of lost its soul. Like anyone can um, follow the system and the recipe and like do it. The boko as well, a bit more liquid than I think it should be. The meat is not as tender as it should be as well. The base formula is there, but it feels like it's run by people that don't care yeah. about the food. Yes. Right? Even when we eat at like hawker places, you can tell if the person behind there is not cooking with the passion and, and, and love for what they're producing. Producing. They're just like, oh, let me just yeah. SOP, here you go. This is kind of what you get. This was apparently one of the more well-recommended places. Everyone gets their fair opinion, but agree to disagree. Personally, in this area, my favorite pho is Long Feng. Give the other uh, small pho-like places uh, a go. Any more questions or anything else that we have to cover here? Um, Let's wrap up today's episode. Vietnamese cuisine or places recommended by Vietnamese in Singapore. I would say the first place, they had amazing banh mi, great value for money. It was like seven bucks and it's just like the, the authentic traditional pork one with all the layers of pork and variations of pork. That one was amazing. I think the second one was just as a restaurant and the options and the quality, you're just getting so much, right? And I think also the service there, their staff is fun. They've been there for 10 years. I think they are also a part of that Juchet community that has kind of like built the whole Vietnamese vibe in that area of Juchet. The last place, the star, you know, me and Seth discussed it a little bit and we were kind of figuring out like, why is it lacking something? We don't know the real answer to it, but we suspect maybe there is some like Singaporean owner in the background or something where it's just like, let's drive the business and money making operation side of things more than making sure that the food and everything is kind of meeting up to uh, certain expectations. And yeah, that's kind of like all I have to say about this episode. I do appreciate everyone commenting and providing us, you know, ideas to where to go and try next. I hope you've enjoyed this episode as well. Please remember to like, subscribe. If you have other recommendations on where to have better fur, do leave it in the comments and follow Gary. Follow me on Instagram. I'm almost at a thousand followers. So close, just another 40 more. Help me get there. I also had someone spot me out in cold storage last weekend. They kind of like me more as a host. She says, she says she likes me as a host more than you. <laughs>
That's right. That's Gary's, a, Gary's a really good um, host, so please feature more of him. We'd like to see more of him. I didn't pay him to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. Catch you in the next one. All right, see ya. Bye. Bye. That's good. Good amount of filling. Oh, we paused. Uh, I forgot to take a photo. I want to take a photo before, before you eat. So, like, right. Uh, give me a second. Like, uh, Puyong, Puyong, oh, uh, wait, can you show me it's the... too much going on. <laughs> I just want to eat this banh mi, man.